Welcome to part three of the Trading Cryptocurrency with Python series. On the last video, we went through a simple Bollinger Bands trading strategy and developed a backtesting environment. Um, this video here will be again using those Bollinger Bands as indicators and implementing a slightly different strategy just to get a bit more practice using that backtesting environment and try to give insight into you know, how you could implement your own custom strategies into this testing environment. Um, so to start, we'll again open up a Jupyter Notebook inside our same directory, um, Python 3HM Notebook. Um, and we will create a new file here. And we will name this um, Bollinger Bands Backtest. We'll be using uh, the double bottoms strategy here. Um, and so the difference will be instead of just trading every time we hit that lower band, we're going to actually want to wait until we hit that lower band for a second time before we buy. And this will, uh, the intention is to make this a bit more of a conservative trading strategy and um, be a bit more specific or a bit more um, selective in which buys we choose. Um, so we'll open up our previous environment here and we'll just copy, we'll grab the same data that we did last time. and the same indicator. So we'll still use our simple moving average and the Bollinger Bands, same as last time. And we will grab this trading environment, but we'll modify it slightly this time around. Um, and we will grab our implementation as well that we'll modify. So these were our results last time. We made 52 buys using um, the simple Bollinger Band strategy, and we ultimately resulted in a 9% profit. Um, and so in order to um, check for these double bottoms we're looking for, we're looking to cross that, that lower band two times before we buy instead of just cross, buying every time we cross it. So to implement that, we'll modify this environment a bit and we'll implement this variable called bottoms. And this will just monitor how many times we've hit that bottom or what's the current state uh, for each cryptocurrency we're looking at. Um, how many times we hit that bottom and are we ready to buy or not? Or are we still waiting for a second bottom? I and mean, we'll do the same for the tops. We're gonna implement the same, same uh, concept on the top side. We're only gonna sell if we hit that top Bollinger Band twice. Um, and so these are just empty dictionaries for now, but we will be we'll define these uh, additional functions called reset bottoms. And we'll take self and then we will also have a reset tops function here. And these will be called right away so that we can kind of set these back to their initial state when necessary. Um, and so what we want to do here is we, within this dictionary, we want to add keys for each of the symbols we're testing on so we can track these things over time. Um, so we'll say for uh, symbol in symbols, we want to set this dictionary for each symbol. We're going to set that as the key, and we're going to just call it none for now. Meaning, we're going to use the term none to mean uh, we're still within the channel. We haven't hit the bottom for the first time. And we'll do the same for the tops. And so if we call these right away when we initialize self dot uh, reset bottoms, Well, self dot reset tops. So these things will get initialized with none for each cryptocurrency of interest. Uh, we are now calling the symbols function. So let's pass that into our environment. Um, we can have symbols, um, and then we can create another variable here. Self dot symbols, symbols, um, and we'll pass that into our, our reset functions. Um, oh, we don't need to pass that in actually. That will just be a variable of the of the class. And so we can say for symbol and self dot symbols. So 
we can initialize that and just kind of to get an idea of how these things are looking, we can call this trading environment. Um, we can pass in symbols as well. And then we can take a look at these things. Our uh, bottoms, we called it. So you can see this is just a dictionary with uh, none set to each of the different symbols we're interested in. And we'll update update these things as we go through the back test and just to keep track of you know have we crossed the bottom band once or and are we ready to buy and so within this uh, back test script here we're gonna have to add a couple additional things to reflect these changes um, I'll make sure put that within within the environment here Delete that. Um, and so before we hit this buy signal, one additional thing we now need to check is is our um, bottoms. So we want to check is this, uh, I guess it's environment.bottoms or the symbol of interest that we're looking to buy, is this equal to, we're gonna call it released. This means that it has crossed the bottom, it has came back up, which we're gonna call it released, and now we're ready to buy. Um, so let's, let's actually define or document this a little bit, just so we know what we're dealing with here. So there's three states that these bottoms and tops can be in. We already said, we already talked about none, so initially, uh, when price, is within channel channel um, we'll just say equals none as soon as we cross our first bottom we're going to set this to be so as soon as we cross first bottom we're going to call this hit so we've hit the first bottom and we're still below it. Um, and then as soon as we cross above bottom, or the bottom Bollinger Band we're referring to, after hit, we're gonna call this released. At the point when this is released, then we're ready to buy, or sell, respectively. Um, and so if we, back to our, our buy signal here, if we've hit this buy signal, but we haven't released yet, this means this is the first time we're hitting it. And so then we want to reset this variable to be if m.bottoms equals hit. Um, not an if statement, actually. We want to call this else. We want to set this to be hit. And so now we've set this uh, our bottoms variable, we want to do this for the symbol of interest uh, as we iterate through each symbol. If we have not, if we've hit the buy signal, but it was not released at the time, we want to set that as, you know, the first hit of that bottom Bollinger Band. Uh, but then we have this concept of release that we also need to capture here. So we're, we're going to add an additional if statement above. Um, so if we have already hit our signal, and we also have, so we want to check now that we have come back above the bottom Bollinger Band. So if our low price has come back above um, our lower band, then we want to set this released. Um, we want to set our bottoms for that symbol to be released. So now we're ready to buy. And the next time it comes through this loop and it hits the buy signal, um, then it can break into this into this buy statement. Um, and after each buy, we want to reset. So we're going to reset our bottoms. And then similarly for the cells, we want we want to do the same thing. So instead of immediately selling on our sell signal, we want to um, check if our environment dot tops 
is uh, released. And this will be for that specific um, symbol, which is our balance unit. Our balance unit is released. Then we can sell. And we can also reset that cell for next time around. Uh, reset tops. Otherwise, if it was not released, if we hit the buy signal but it wasn't released yet, that means it was the first time we hit that top Bollinger Band. And in that case, we are going to do the same thing here, uh, but instead we're going to be setting the tops. And not for the symbol, but for our, our current balance unit, because we're selling our current balance unit. So we're going to set that to be hit. Um, and then lastly, to capture this, again, this released concept here, if we come into, and we, we get our, well, so if we've already hit our top Bollinger Band, we want to so first check if we've hit it. And if we have So if our high price now has dropped back below the top Bollinger Band. Um, so just the opposite of what we did before. We've already hit it, and our high price has dropped below the upper band. Then we can set our um, our top to balance unit. We can then set this to be released. And so now the second time we come through this loop here, after we've already released that um, top Bollinger Band, then when we come through this sell signal, we'll actually sell whatever cryptocurrency we owned. So we can test this out. And we can see this time around we actually we, we had less buys because we're being more conservative on that initial strategy, waiting for that second bottom or that double bottom to hit before we buy. And we've actually increased our profits here up to 20% in this specific trading period. And so to get a look at these, we'll do the same thing um, using our plot function we wrote before um, and use plot results. Um, this takes in our data frame. Um, we'll look at Bitcoin to start, and then we need our buys and sells. And so if we take a look at a couple of these, you see there's uh, definitely less buys here. Um, we can zoom in on this area here. So after this sell, so we'll look, zoom in on this buy specifically, you can see we made sure that we hit so we hit a bottom first, and then we didn't buy initially right as we crossed that first bottom. Uh, we actually waited until we hit it a second time. So you can see our, our buy here uh, after we hit that bottom a second time. Um, and then similarly with the tops, so we had our buy down here. We hit this top a first time initially, and this was around uh, middle of like 55,500. Um, and then, but we didn't, didn't sell right away. We actually waited until we hit this second top here, which ended up being at 57,000. So we did increase the profit on that specific buy by waiting for a second top. And actually our, you know, waiting for the second bottom there ended up to be a better buy at uh, a lower price. So overall, just a bit more conservative of a trading strategy, waiting for a, a stronger indicator, but buying, buying less frequently. And you can see this did increase our profits from uh, initially it was 9%, and now we're seeing up to 20% profit over only a seven month trading period. Um, I think that, that'll cover it for this video. In the next part of this series, we'll be trying to actually, we'll take, probably take one of these strategies or maybe a new one that we've um, you know been talking about before and we'll look at how can we actually implement this live on the API. It's one thing to just back test a strategy, uh, but it's another thing to actually compute all of these indicators that we've been using computing them live and pulling the data live from the API and actually sending those buy and sell signals. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part of the video of the series.